Internet children, my name is Taylor, and today I am here with special author guest Morgan Matson, the author of Since You've Been Gone and the new release, The Unexpected Everything. And it released Tuesday, and I was like dying. <laughs> most epic bucket list possible in a minute and I'll time you. Oh my gosh. Because ah! I know that's part of like okay, since that's been since you've been gone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ready, set, go. Road trip across America, go skydiving, go skinny dipping, uh, steal something, break something, uh, uh, run through the mall in 60 seconds, um, uh, uh, read the complete works of Charles Dickens, um, kiss a stranger, uh, hug a bob, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking, uh, see five concerts in a week, um, a climb Mount Everest, um, dunk a basketball, uh, uh, break into, like, a get pulled up on the stage at a concert, um, <laughs> ah! If that's what you have, that's good. Well, my time. You are at 45 seconds. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, um, I'm like freezing up. Uh, I'm thinking one last really good one. Um, meet Taylor Swift. Meet Taylor Swift. Yes. There we go. That was a perfect way to end it because I know you're a huge Taylor Swift yes, fan. Yes, I we am. We talked about it earlier. Yes. Okay. So the first question for you is for all the people who don't know, what is the plot of the unexpected everything? So the unexpected everything is about a girl named Andy who likes to plan out everything in her life, and she has her whole summer all planned out. But right at the beginning of the summer, her father, who's a congressman, gets involved in a scandal, and so suddenly her prestigious internship is pulled. She has to stay home. And um, her dad is home, like in the house, which he really hasn't been in the last few years. So they sort of have a fraught relationship. She's having to stay at home. The only job she can get involves walking way too many dogs. <laughs> but she has her three best friends in town with her, and things start to look up when she meets a boy named Clark. So it's sort of her summer adventures. Yay! So what did you want to be when you were a child? It depended on the year. Like, <laughs> I went through phases. Uh, I wanted to be a ballet dancer for a long time. Then I wanted to be an actress for a while. I was really into horseback riding for a while. So it sort of changed. What is your favorite Taylor Swift album? If you can choose, because they're like choosing children. It's hard. Like they're all super different. I feel like it's like a tie, I think, probably between Speak Now or Red. Yeah. I love that she wrote all the songs Speak Now herself. Yeah. Um, but and Red, I love it. I read Red's sort of like big and unwieldy. It's, I think it's her most yeah. most tracks in the album. Like yeah. I think it's the most sort of it's a transition album, which I yeah. think is always sort of really telling and interesting because I feel like it's you sort of get to see someone laid bare a little bit. Yeah. Like I feel like she's sort of the most honest in that album. Yeah. Um, I could talk about this all day long. No one yeah. ever wants to talk about Taylor Swift. No. This is really, can we just talk about this yes, for the rest of the it. time? Like, that can be the whole interview. Yeah, the Taylor Swift parallels are into your books. Uh -huh. So do you want to share some of them for oh, people who absolutely. don't know? absolutely. The main character in my second book, Second Chance Summer, is named Taylor. It came because I love Taylor Swift, and my editor would sort of make fun of me. This was, like, back in 2000... 11. So I feel like I loved her, but it hadn't gone sort of as yeah. mainstream, and so my editor was like making fun of me, and now I don't think she would do that. Uh, so when I had to send her like a like a summary of the book, of what like before I started writing it, just kind of what I was thinking, I was like, there's a girl, and she's named Taylor, because I knew it would make her laugh. And then I was like, no, I love that name, and I want that to be her yeah. name. I love that name too. Yeah, it's a good saying, name. Great name. And I have a little Easter egg for people who know in Since You've Been Gone, because right. Emily's parents are named Scott and Andrea. You know what that is, you know what that is. Yeah. And some people have been like, did you know they're the same as Taylor Swift's parents' names? And I'm like, of course I knew. Like, that's just in there for you guys. I'm like, the biggest fan. What exactly. are you talking about? If you get it, you get it. And playlists in uh, Since You've Been Gone. Yes. And so there's a bunch of Taylor Swift songs on there. Yeah. Did you do anything on the bucket list in Since You've Been Gone? I've done a few of the things. Um, Would you like to share? I feel like maybe of some of them I shouldn't. Like, uh... <laughs> Like, I've done a couple of the things. The original list was different. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it, it changed a little bit as the as the book, like, sort of, like, the one about Dance Until Dawn, uh, that whole scene at the wedding, like, wasn't in there at all, and that came later. Um, but I sort of wrote the book not knowing how she was going to accomplish any of them. Like, I sort of made the list and then was like, I wonder how that's going to go. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so sort of take the journey with her a little bit. That's super Which cool. is really fun. What would you want to do that you haven't done on the bucket list? On the bucket list. Sort of I've always loved the hug a Jamie one, yes. just because it's so random, and it's like the idea of just like finding a random person, 
being like, I don't know who you are, okay. But can I hug you? Can I hug you? Like, I just, I thought it was always such, like, a fun, like, situation to put someone in. <laughs> yeah. Where it's just kind of like, because I honestly feel like if someone, like, came up to me and was like, I have to hug a Morgan, can I hug you? I'd be like, yes, and now I have a story to tell. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, if you could cast a movie for the unexpected everything, oh my and gosh. you get to pick the lead actress mm -hmm. for your main character and her love interest, Ooh. who would you cast? I think I would probably actually cast like Emma Stone from like Superbad or Easy A yeah. like a few years ago Emma yeah. Stone. She's just a little older and I feel like she used to have that like really, she was so cute when she was a teenager. She was. So relatable and so funny. So I feel like she'd be a really good Andy. And as for Clark, hmm. People have been uh, posting pictures of, um, he's in the Maze Runner, he's in Teen Wolf. Oh, uh, uh, Dylan. Dylan O'Brien. Dylan, I posted a picture of him and I was like, oh yeah, I could see it with glasses. But the picture I was looking at sort of when I was like, thinking about how to describe Clark, there was a picture of Joseph Gordon-Levitt when he was younger and I was like, oh, I feel like maybe that's kind of like, he has like little kind of like narrow eyes and yeah. like he, he was wearing glasses in this picture. And I was like, that's, he's not like so tall. Like he's a little bit geeky. That's so, awesome. So like that's sort of, if he was younger. Dreamcast. That's Dreamcast. Okay. That involves time travel. Let's, so it's like, let's make it cast. a thing. <laughs> <laughs> if Emily and Sloan went on the Amazing Race as a team, Ooh. do you think they would win? No. W why? No, they would not win at all. Like, but they'd have a really good time and they'd have a lot of adventures. But like, like, how far do you think they'd make it? Not very far. So they'd be like round two? Maybe or do you think they'd be longer than okay. that? I feel like Sloane would get sidetracked. <laughs> would She'd like meet someone, like discover something, and you know, she's like always late for everything anyway. So, yeah. like, getting to a place <laughs> at a certain time, just like, wouldn't she, work at all. She wouldn't do well at all, but I think they would have like the best adventure. Right? I didn't even let you finish the question. I was like, no. No, they wouldn't <laughs> win. Just don't even ask. <laughs> what should we expect from the unexpected everything? Oh my gosh, I see what you did there. Yeah, um, I'm so funny. <laughs> I love it. I feel like you should expect um, sort of a book that kind of feels like summer and takes you through a girl's whole summer, which I like. And one thing I wanted to do with this book was make it not just about like a romance. Like it's about a romance, but it's also about friendship and it's also about family. And right. I really wanted it to be all three things, all equally important. Because I feel like in so many books, even since you've been gone, the parents aren't really there. Like it's not really about the family, it's really about friendship. And, um, but I kind of wanted for this story, I wanted to be these three things, they're all driving the story, they're all equally important. Because it's not like you meet someone and suddenly you forget all about your friends right. and like your life stops in one direction and just has like a tiny subplot in the other. It's like everything always happens all at the same time. I love how they're not really insta-lovey books yeah. because I have such a hard time with like insta-love. I'm like, love. this is not how it works. You don't believe in it. Like I feel like you can like like someone immediately, but I yeah. feel like you can't. Like you have, I, I'm like a big fan of like really becoming friends with someone and getting to know someone before you like decide if you even really like them. Right. Like, I've had friends who were like, no, this person walked in. I was like, I know. And I mean, I guess they can say that like in retrospect because it worked out. Yeah. Like I'm sure you could say that a lot of other times, but yeah. so I don't know. So I have some this or that questions okay. for you. Country or pop? Can it be country pop? Can it be bold? Yeah. Between the two of them, country. Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Book or book to film adaptations? Depends. I feel like sometimes they're really good. Sometimes adaptations are great. Like I loved the Harry Potter movies. I loved the Hunger Games movies because it's yeah. like suddenly you get to see this spectacle. Right. Movie or TV? I love seeing movies in the theater because okay. I love popcorn. Yeah. And sometimes I'll go see a movie I don't even really want to see because I want to like sit in the air conditioning and have popcorn. Do you put extra butter? Oh my god, extra butter, extra salt. I'll go see movies with the popcorn. And I'm like, mm, you're not gonna want this. I'm like, oh, oh, it's fine. And then they take a bite and they're like, oh, I told you. It's like really salty. It's really salty and really buttery. buttery. Like I warned you guys. For ice cream. Oh my gosh. Rocky Road or Rainbow Sherbet? Rocky Road. Are you a chocolate person? I am, but not chocolate ice cream. Do you have any new works in progress that you'd like to share a little bit about? I'm or? working on a new book that's going to be out summer 2017, so next summer, but I don't really want to say anything about it yet because we haven't sort of announced anything. Okay. So the last thing okay. I have to ask you is what would you like to say to the viewers? Hi. Um, I hope you like The Unexpected Everything. I'm super proud of this book. Uh, I'm yeah. so excited that it's finally out in the world. It feels like it's been a really long time since I've had a book out, but it's only been like two years, yeah. but it, or a year and a half, but it, or every, yeah, two years, I guess. The last book came out two years ago, but um, I'm really excited about it. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think on Twitter. Um, I can't wait to hear people's reactions. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for being here. Hi, thank you so much I, for having me. Yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye!